Good morning, everybody. Our first map today looks at the last seven days of total accumulated precipitation through 12 a.m. this morning. And what it shows us is the effect of these last three systems. Now, before we had this major winter storm that came through California and is now ejected into the plains and still today slowly moving toward the Great Lakes and eventually New England, we did have this upper level ridge that sat over parts of the southeast that delivered two rounds of rainfall right into parts of the Mid-South and Southeast. What's com uh, shown completely here, though, is the fullness of those three systems and the total amount of rainfall they've produced. And in some locations, that's been six to well over 12 inches of rainfall. On the northern side of it, this has been all snow, and we'll take a look at the snowfall totals in a few seconds. But what I'll be very interested to see later today, about an hour after I made this video, uh, will be the newest drop monitor. Now, remember, the data on the drop monitor are always valid on Tuesday. Uh, the map comes out to the public on Thursday. So this is last week's map. This will update again in about an hour after I record this. But I want to make a point that a lot of the recent rainfall here won't be included. But I still expect there to be some significant improvement in parts of the Mid-South uh, in the southern states of the United States with this recent precipitation that has come through. What's been interesting about all this rain is we've finally seen this kind of get its way into the Mississippi River. And as of this morning, the river is now above flood stage. It's at almost seven feet in depth near uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Remember, it was at about 32 to 35 feet in depth before the uh, drought of this fall settled in. And it's expected just over the next couple of days to actually raise uh, you know, almost another five to seven feet. Uh, which is good. I think it's going to continue to go beyond this as well, especially as more of this moisture gets kind of through the tributaries and into the uh, into the uh, the main body of the river here. Just to make a point, though, uh, we've still got a, several more feet to go before the river recovers, which means we're going to have to watch this over the next month or so to see if it continues. All right. Um, on the southern side of this, we saw a tremendous amount of severe weather, and uh, it'll be difficult to kind of cover all of it. I'm just going to show you the end result at this point. We had 33 additional tornado reports yesterday, including uh, several tornadoes that caused fatalities. In my report, I linked a great video just to see what these storms look like. Uh, but we'll be watching today as the damage reports come out for how strong some of these tornadoes were. The highly sheared environment, the deep, unstable air, was, a, was just the right setup ahead of the main front to produce at one point just it seemed like dozens of very small supercell thunderstorms and they were all spinning producing tornadoes. Now we'll add this to what we had the previous day which was the tornadoes that uh, again crossed the Mississippi River and then those uh, that were here over and around the Dallas Fort Worth area. I think that brings the uh, two-day total to around 64 65 tornado events. This was a, a very rough uh, sequence of events down south. Today the severe weather threat is going to push to Florida as the front clears is going to do that pretty quickly. All right. On the snow side of this, I want to show you two different maps to just to kind of capture what happened here coming into parts of Nebraska and uh, South Dakota. So the first map is the last 72 hours uh, of total accumulated snow ending last night. When they added in this morning, that drops off some of the most recent, or sorry, some of the snow from the beginning of the system. Remember, this thing started last Saturday. And uh, we can see here that some of the areas from Nebraska through South Dakota, North Dakota, now into the upper Midwest states of Minnesota and Wisconsin are, are in that 12 to 18 inch range with a few locations here well over a foot. Uh, the winds on the back side of this have produced whiteout conditions and we'll continue to see ground blizzard conditions even though the snow falling from the sky is going to stop in this area. And that's partly why the National Weather Service has continued to issue a blizzard warning in this area. The snow will taper today, but we're going to continue to see uh, ground blizzard conditions due to the winds. We have winter storm warnings that stretch from the Dakotas all the way to Vermont. There's a nice storm warning coming out of parts of Virginia into Pennsylvania as well. And uh, so this system is, is, is really uh, packing a punch here. Now, just to show you how it finishes, I'm going to go to the high res name. Let's pick this up. I don't know. It's about 9 o'clock this morning. So this is where we're potentially going to be seeing some ice. The front will be clearing parts of the mid-Atlantic through the Carolinas down into Florida. Again, that's where our severe storm risk is going to be today. And as this moves, I mean, the upper level low is still sitting here. It's stacked up over the surface low. So this is through 2 o'clock this afternoon, playing through this evening, getting out there to early tomorrow morning on Friday. I mean, we continue to see the snow here trying to slow down, but uh, stronger winds and much colder air starting to come in here. We're going to watch this snow continue to fall across much of the upper Midwest and northern plains going forward. We'll get some of the snow into Iowa, northern Illinois, and clipping the southern edge of this. But as we play through the day on Friday, getting out here now to early Saturday. Whoops, sorry, we made a big jump there. Uh, this is Friday night into Saturday morning. There you are. 
We'll see some of the lake effect snow take over as the low moves over the Great Lakes. And that's it. That'll be the end of this first system. So uh, it was a Saturday to Saturday event, seven days. Now, additional snowfall shown by the European model through 6 p.m. Sunday is seen here. Heavy snows are going to be uh, right up in this part of Minnesota uh, down into northern Wisconsin. But you can kind of pick out your area if you live in the Midwest here and see uh, what the models are continuing to put down for snow for this system. Into New England, where we have the winter storm warnings now issued, we do expect from north central Pennsylvania through parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, getting into Maine, uh, some very heavy snow. Again, elevation dependent here, some places 6 to 18 inches of snow out of this. We'll also bring some of that into parts of uh, Massachusetts as well. Um, now, uh, this was just the first of what will be a very active end to the end of 2022, and I want to show you the next feature that we're watching. So we're going to go right to the trough ridge pattern in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So this is the trough we've been talking about. So it's just sitting there cut off from the flow. But the next one we're watching is the result of two large ridges, one building here between the Hudson Bay uh, and, and um, uh, Greenland, excuse me, and then this other large ridge that's building into parts of Alaska. And what it's done is it's created a very um, dense, shallow air mass full of Arctic air that's um, basically being seen as a deeper trough that's sitting over parts of British Columbia and Alberta. Now what's been important to watch with this trough is how far it's able to make it over the mountains. And in tonight's in-depth video, there's several things I can't wait to show you. Some of it will be about the severe weather last night, and the other part is going to be about how shallow this air mass is. Now it looks unassuming, but right here by next Tuesday, the cold air that is trapped into this that's pushing up against the Rocky Mountains um, is near record setting in terms of high pressure and is going to bring in a, a tremendous amount of cold air. Now, if you notice, next Tuesday into Wednesday, can you see how sharp the gradient is between this kind of gentle ridging we see here uh, and the trough that's coming out of the western Canadian prairie? That shallow air mass is going to have a difficult time getting over the Rockies, meaning that the Rockies are going to serve as a channel to force that cold air south. And we're going to watch the very nose of this shortwave right here. That'll also be where the cold air is located by next Wednesday to pull out of Idaho and Montana into the northern plains and through the Midwest. Now, about the time we get out to Thursday, as this starts to curl over Illinois, uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, there's going to be a significant increase in the curvature of this trough, which means we're going to develop possibly a deep low. We call this a Miller Type B storm system that starts here and then runs off to the northeast. And here we are. I know it's out pretty far in a single operational forecast, but out here uh, next Thursday, the 22nd, right up into the Christmas weekend, that could be a substantially deep cyclone hitting New England. Now, please understand what I'm about to share with you is speculative. We're still watching several pieces come together here, but I've been keeping an eye on the model trends, and so I feel confident kind of sharing with you what I'm going to share next. To talk about the depth of this cold air, I'm just going to play through you every six hours through this weekend getting into early, uh, let's just stop it here Sunday morning with the temperatures. So the coldest air will be here. Just take a quick look at my color bar and make a very hard break at 32. In fact, I put a contour line on it. But this second hard break in the color here happens at zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So this Sunday morning, very cold air coming out of the Canadian Prairie into Montana and the Dakotas, which have already taken a beating from this um, current blizzard. In fact, I've seen a lot of pictures of cow-calf operations and, and other cattle herds just enduring brutally cold air. Well, that was the beginning. If we go into next week, this is next Monday, into Tuesday morning, Tuesday uh, transitioning into Wednesday morning. And if you notice, see how sharp the edge is on this? This is what we're going to talk about tonight in the in-depth report. That shows you how shallow this air mass is. But by next Wednesday, this shallow air mass is going to be diving across the central plains and heading toward the Midwest. I'm just going to park this out here. I don't know. Let's go all the way out to Saturday morning. There we go. 6 a.m. Saturday morning, Christmas Eve. The potential for this delivering sub-zero surface temperatures in the morning through Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, that, that certainly exists right now. That's how deep this cold air mass is. And we've been talking about it for a while, so I also want to give you the updated kind of broad maps of what I've been showing uh, for the last week and a half or so. And what you've got here is the day 5 through 10 temperature anomalies. Some of these temperatures could be more than 20 degrees colder than normal. We're talking 30 to 40 degrees colder than normal. And then it appears that that colder air will stick off to the east uh, through the end of this year. 
Now, the, again, the mountains are protecting the west. And as a result, we're going to see more modified Pacific air in the western United States, preventing brutally cold air from getting into that region. But as we see the nose of that cold air coming out next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this is what it might do in terms of impacting storm systems. So let's do our multi-model analysis here, GFS left, European right. We've already seen the end of the first system, so let's play through that. That gets us out there towards Saturday. Before this next big shot at really cold air comes in, there is the potential for a system next Monday. Uh, it's not really well resolved in the European anymore, but the GFS still has it coming out here into parts of the Mid-South, Southern Plains, Lower Mississippi River Valley. I think the more likely scenario is to see the storms down here in eastern Texas over to Louisiana. Now this is Tuesday morning right here. What I want you to be watching is this wave that comes into the Northwest. It's here in the GFS. It's there in the European. I want to make a statement here. These are operational runs. There is ensemble support for what I'm about to share with you. But at this point, these are just the things we're watching now. This is the information I have available to me on Thursday morning. Let's now see where this goes. So the models are taking that wave, pulling it out of Idaho and Montana, across the plains. And the GFS is not as well resolved as the European is on this system because the European sharpens the curvature of that upper level low right here by the time we go from Wednesday into Thursday and develops a deeper low that's possibly gonna be out ahead of what the GFS is saying over the Ohio River Valley. So there's gonna be a quick transition because of the gradient in pressure on the back side of this getting into that high where we could see um, you know, very, very cold temperatures. Oh, I apologize for kind of interrupting myself here, but I'm staring kind of closely at this because it suggests that the high pressure, the mean sea level pressure inside of this could be 1064, and the European has that as well. Now, why I'm, I kind of got fixated on that for a second, I'll have to look this up tonight, but I think that the lower 48 record for high pressure might be near this. Uh, I'll look into that tonight and make sure to report back to you. Um, anyway, where's the storm going? Well, the European model curls it up quickly over the Ohio River Valley. The GFS is attempting this. And the European model takes this as a large winter storm up the East Coast on Friday. This would be December 23rd. That would be very disruptive uh, to holiday travel and add a significant amount of snow back into parts of the Midwest and then uh, the Northeast. Now we have to watch this system carefully. So much can change. As you know, as I noted a moment ago, the events that have to come together to make this rely on the position and strength of that Arctic air moving out of the Western Canadian Prairie. So timing will change. The depth of that will change. We'll have a lot of things to watch, but I want you just to be aware of what we're seeing today. That's it. So please don't um, take more into it than this, but it's important to see that it's in both runs. Okay. From here, I want to show you what the jet stream is going to do, and I'm kind of excited about this. You're looking down on the North Pole, and the color shading tells you the wind speed uh, deep in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Now, as I plane to next week, here is the strong jet stream level winds on Wednesday that are born on that strong temperature gradient. There's the curves we were talking about in the flow that's going to produce that low, according to the European model. But this is what I'm interested in. The model has now increased the wind speeds breaking through the what is currently a bit of a jumbled pattern in the Gulf of Alaska. And as it does that, this is going to extend more of that Pacific flow. Take a look at that at the end of the month into the northwest. So this extended bit of the jet now showing up in the ensemble runs has increased the week two precipitation chances, meaning that the end of this year, if the flow is coming in like this, we're going to see a whole lot more activity as systems eject over the mountains come into parts of the Midwest and Mid-South. So while you may see drier conditions here for the week two forecast, this does not mean inactive. I think we're actually gonna see quite a bit of activity to finish uh, 2022. Now, to reiterate, I think the biggest threat in addition to this potential pre-Christmas winter storm system is what the cold temperatures are gonna do. And I'm gonna read it with the National Weather Service and NOAA have been discussing that the risk for um, near record setting cold is very high across a broad section of the United States. We need to prepare for this um, in ag as we go forward. 
Lastly, I don't want it to feel like an afterthought, but we're still dealing with drought in Argentina. It's hitting parts of Paraguay, Uruguay, and southern Brazil, especially down in Rio Grande do Sul, over the next 15 days. Very heavy rains north. This is, as I said yesterday, going to push that crop along uh, and really provide the water it's going to need just before harvest. Uh, so this will be an important pattern coming up for South America as well. Cover that more in tonight's in-depth report. I appreciate your extra attention this morning, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.